Rational, when you see the word rational, that means ratio. And ratio, when you think of a ratio, you think of comparing two quantities, like in a fractional form. And root, what root means is that that's a solution of the equation. It's what makes the equation equal to zero. And these are also the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So that's uh, the roots, okay? They call these roots, solutions, x-intercepts, zeros. Those all mean the same thing. And so the way we find these rational roots is by taking all the factors of the constant, sometimes they refer to that as p, over all the factors of the leading coefficient, this number here in front. So all the factors of the constant, meaning all the numbers that divide in evenly to 12, all the integers, divided by all the integers that divide in evenly to, into this leading coefficient 2. So if we're going to do that, all the factors of 12 are going to be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And all the factors of the leading coefficient would just be plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 2. So these are all the numbers that divide in evenly to the leading coefficient. So now what you can do is you can take any number in the numerator divided by any number in the denominator and come up with a possible rational root. So these aren't guaranteed to be the roots, but what it does is it narrows down uh, the possibilities that you could try in order to find out you know, a root or a solution or a zero of this polynomial. So you're narrowing down. Like if I had to you know, guess which number would make this equal to zero, it, it might be a while for me guessing. I might try and factor this and set the factor to zero, but it might not be easily factored. It might not be in a form that I recognize. And that's where the rational root theorem comes in. I can see this isn't a quadratic, it's a cubic. So it's a little bit more challenging to factor. So here's what we do. We take the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient. And if you want, you can write these out. You could say like this is going to be plus or minus 1 over 1, which is 1. This is going to be 2 over 1, which is 2. So these all could be positive or negative. 3, 4, 6, 12. Or it could be 1 half. Okay, so I'll just slip in 1 half right there. Okay, or it could be 2 over 1, which is 2, we already have listed. 2 over 2, which is 1. 3 over 2, okay, we don't have that one. I'll put that one in there. 3 over 2. Uh, 4 over 1, we have that. 4 over 2 is 2, we have that. 6 over 2 is 3. 6 over 1, we have that. 12 over 2, which is 6, we have that. So, so these are all the possible rational roots. Now, what we do to test them out is we do synthetic division. So let's, let's say we wanted to test to see if 6 was a, a root. What we do is we go over here and we do our synthetic division. 2, negative 12, 22, and negative 12. And we do our synthetic division. So this is 12, 0, 0, 22, 120, 132, uh, 120. So this one didn't come out to 0. So that means that 6 is not a 0. It's not a root of this polynomial. Okay, so cross that one off the list. Uh, let's try another one. Let's say we want to try 1. Okay, so 2, negative 2, 22, negative 12. Those are our coefficients. We're doing the synthetic division. 2, 2, 0, 0, 22, 22. Okay, and this comes out to 10. So. Oh, I made a mistake because this is 12. Okay, let's do that again. So this would be um, negative 10. This would be negative 10. This would be 12. And then this would be 12. And this would be 0. Okay, so there we go. So that we got 0 as a remainder. So that means that 1 is a 0. Okay, it is a root. And what happens when you do the synthetic division is this goes down by 1 degree. So originally it was a cubic. Now we're going to be down to a quadratic. So 2x squared minus 10x plus 12. Now that it's in the quadratic, we can do the quadratic formula to find the other zeros, or we can factor. So here I'm just going to factor. I'm going to factor out the 2. And here I can factor this into two binomials, x minus 3 and x minus 2. If I set these factors equal to 0, we get 3 or 2. Okay, so we have our zeros, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so what that means is, you can write this in factored form. It's going to be 2, okay, that's that 2 right there, 
x minus 3, x minus 2, okay, and then 1 was a 0, so x minus the 0 is a factor. x minus the 0 is a factor, so that's x minus 1. So this is our polynomial here in factored form. If you set the factor to 0, you get the, the zeros, the x-intercepts. And if we wanted to graph this, it's going to cross here at 1, 2, 3. The leading coefficient is positive, so that tells us it's going to go up to the right. It's an odd degree, which tells us it's going to go the opposite way to the left. So just making a rough sketch here, the graph's going to look something like that. It's going to cross at these points. We have the end behavior. It's a quick way to get a sketch of this polynomial uh, without you know, taking it to the next level. So this is basically just a quick way to get a graph, finding the zeros, using the rational root theorem, and uh, go ahead and review this video if you need to uh, go through it one more time, and I'll see you in the next video.